Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys. I'm Christian Ocampo here on location in Los Angeles, California. And today I'm joined by Steve Staley. How are you doing, Steve? Hi there, how everybody? How's it going? <laughs> right, good. Uh, so we have a few questions for you. Awesome. First of all, we want to know what's it like working in the industry today? Um, the truth is it's the same as it ever was. Auditions and jobs, auditions and jobs. The way that it's different now, I don't know if you've gotten this answer from other people, is that as of uh, the early 2000s when the digital revolution occurred and everything went from going on tape to being digital. So before our auditions were all always on tape or um, even mini disc or burned onto CDs and, and then at a certain point it just all went digital so everything was emailed and that's the biggest change but as far as working in the industry today the truth is acting is still acting shows are still shows and storytelling is still storytelling all right yeah this kind of, kind of different from what other actors have said so yeah yeah, I'd be curious to see what other actors' impression of what's it like working in the business today. <laughs> right on. All right, so what's your favorite show you have worked on? Um, you know, that's hard to say because there are shows that are good because they're good shows, and then there's working, which is what it's like for me when I go to work, you know, the people that I'm hanging out with and who I get to see. In anime specifically as you and everybody already knows, we're there alone. I don't really get to work with anybody else except me, the director, and the engineer. So a lot of it comes down to my interaction with the, the director. So for example, a show from 2004, did we determine? Fighting Spirit? Yes. There's a great guy named Richard Epcar. You probably know Richard Epcar. He was the director of that show. And um, we had a huge number of lines to get through. I was playing Epo and he was playing the coach. And so... We, we had a ton of material every week, and he's a fun guy. And I can remember as grueling as that show could be because there was a lot of fighting and efforting and there were a lot of line counts per episode. We always had a blast between me, Richard, and the engineer joking, having fun, doing the lines, getting, getting through it. Uh, so that show was fun for that reason. It's a fun show, too, just because it's so earnest and, and sweet uh, but as far as shows that I thought were really cool I've always said Heat Guy J was one of my favorite shows as a show because I, when I would watch it it was cool you know I liked the show that's a that's a, a good enough start <laughs> it is <laughs> <laughs> alright so another show we worked on that was that's kind of popular right now was like working on Kill the Kill right that is popular and when I got that part um Everyone told me how popular it was going to be, which is always awesome. But, you know, when you go to work, it's really always the same. You go into a studio, in general, a studio where you've worked a million times before, and your job is to act out the lines and um, communicate with the director, do a bunch of different takes, try a bunch of different versions, and see what's going to work based on what the director and the, and the producer want. My job is to just keep interpreting according to what they're wishes are so kill a kill was fun they took it really seriously and um uh went for some great stuff i lucked out because i got to play such a crazy out there character you know if you get to uh, play crazier characters it's a little more delicious and fun to act out somebody who's kind of quirky and crazy than it is just to always play a young hero or whatever so kill a kill was fun for that reason and there was a lot going on in that show. Every every week was something different. Was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Not sure what worked on that you already mentioned. What was that working on? Heat Guy J. Oh yeah, I did just mention Heat Guy J. And the truth is, at this point, that was a long time ago. And um, mostly, I remember sitting there and enjoying the the visuals. I liked that show visually, like the cityscape that they created and all the buildings and the, the world that existed in Heat Guy J, which was familiar, which was familiar. It wasn't necessarily a dystopian world or a different world like you often have in anime. It looked like a real city and it was fun for that reason at work because I enjoyed like 
watching it. It was the only time I really got to see it. I mean, it was on MTV2 for a while, and I watched a couple of episodes then. Uh, but mostly it was fun sitting there and um, taking in the, the visuals. It was also the first time that Christy Reed and I had ever worked together, and I, I remember it for that low these many years. I don't remember what year He Guy J was, but around 2005, right? 2006, yeah, maybe? Oh. I'm done. I don't have anything else to say about that. I love that show. Heat Guy J. Check it out. In fact, I would like to revisit it myself to just to see it again after this many years. It's a good show. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Especially uh, Pepper and Brooke. Yeah, it was... Was this Bob's final role? I'm not sure it was, but he did a great job as... As the... As the J. Yes. That's right. He was J. That was a great part. Yeah, that was a fun show. Loved it. Right. So we have a little funny question we want to ask you. Okay. If you can be any character you have played in real life, who we be? And you can mix and match. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. So hopefully you've got some good editing skills. Let me think. If I could be anyone, who would it be? I'm trying to think of anybody who had magical powers. Can you think of anyone who had magical powers? I thought you took from X. Uh, oh, yeah. He had some powers go- going on. Um but they were pretty dark, weren't they? Yeah, they were. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool character. I'd like to play the characters with hair. That's really what my fantasy would be. <laughs> oh, your character from K was also pretty, I think he had some powers too. Some magical powers. Yeah, so hair and magical powers. That's what I'm really going for. If I'm living in a cartoon world. <laughs> like, that's an interesting <laughs> combination. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. So, since I just mentioned X, what was I working on X? X was fun for me because I got to play a leading role, and it was a dark show. So, it didn't, it required a lot of brooding. It wasn't a lot of screaming and yelling, and you're going to laugh. That the, I remember that show specifically because I liked going into work because I knew that I was going to have to do a lot less screaming and yelling than I would on any other show. And as you can imagine, at a certain point in voice acting, Screaming and yelling gets tedious and tiresome. I mean, I get that it's part of the job. I, I, I'm happy to do it, but, you know, you're protective of your voice. And I remember always thinking before recording sessions of X how happy I was that not only did I not have to scream and yell, but that everything was talking like this and really serious. And I didn't even have to speak above a whisper. It was awesome. <laughs> and that was a long time ago at this point, too. Yeah, I bet. So another sort of old show we worked on, what was it like working on Fighting Spirits? Well, like I already said, that show was a lot of fun, mostly because unlike a lot of dubbing jobs, if we're speaking about anime or dubbing specifically, that they, they are not hour intensive. Like I can play a part like Kill a Kill, but not have to actually go to work that many hours because we can do several episodes in a certain amount of time in a two-hour recording session. And so it's not like I'm there for 10 or 15 hours a week. But Fighting Spirit, I would sometimes be there 10 and 11 hours a week recording because each episode had a couple hundred lines in it, which is different from the usual when you might have 30 lines or 40 lines. But in Fighting Spirit, Ipo would have like 150 lines, 200 lines per show, and that takes a certain amount of time to get through that. So my experience of working on Fighting Spirit is memorable to me simply because we put in so much more hours on that show in the year that we worked on it. And uh, because of that, I remember it. It's a good show. Like I said, cute show, earnest, sweet. It wasn't about the world ending or weird interplanetary war. It was about a boy going from A to Z in his journey in um, athletics and boxing in particular, and it was a very sweet show. All right. So is there anything else coming out that you can talk about or anything you want to plug in at this time? Let me think about that. You're going to laugh, and this is so not a good answer, but I did a show last week, the name of which I cannot remember, but it uh, had a pretty... F- it was about people who can't die, called Ajins. Does that mean anything to you? No, I can't say that. You can't say that or I'm not allowed to talk no, about I, it? No, I mean, i never heard of that word before. Oh, because for all I know, I'm not allowed to talk about it. And here I am talking about it. Uh, and that had a really cool look to it. Very realistic, kind of dark, again, dystopian. 
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember the title. You gotta understand when you're doing voice acting, more than the title, what's important is when the session is and where it where it is. When is it starting and what t- time do I have to be there and where? So on a job like that, which was a cool show, it's the title of it is sort of irrelevant to my job. You know what I'm saying? All I have to do is make sure that I'm on time and that I say the lines the way the director wants me to say them. I bet after I work on that show a few more times, I'll remember the title. But for now, Ajin, and I bet that's enough for people to know what I'm talking about somewhere in the world. Uh, or get me sued because I wasn't supposed to say anything about it, but so be it. <laughs> all right. So, last question, and we ask this to all the guests. All right. Any Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media for the fans to contact you? I'm on Facebook. Steve Staley has my picture. I guess if you um, know what I look like and you match that with Steve Staley on Facebook, you'll know that it's me. You can also tell by postings and stuff. Um, I do have Twitter, at Staley Bud, but I don't really tweet that much. I'm more of a reader and follower on Twitter than I am a tweeter. In fact, I never tweet. Uh, and then I have an Instagram account, but I don't... It, that wouldn't be fun for anybody, and I don't even remember what my title is. But I have Facebook, Steve Staley. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for joining me for awesome. an interview. Thank you. And we want to thank our fans for tuning in for another edition of the Ohio Guys. And we hope to all see you again next time. I'm Christian. I'm Steve. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.